Magic the Gathering players and collectors. It's that time again. We're going to bust open that collector box because there could be a very valuable magic card in there. There really could. I mean, this whole Lord of the Rings craziness is just like, all right, I'll, I'll take a swing at it. You never know. Maybe I'll get the card and heck, I'll just pay off my house and I'll buy, a lot of, you know, a lot of, I may retire from magic or might buy and, you know, pay off my house, whatever, or nothing's going to happen. We're just going to have some cool cards and, you know, from, uh, this is a really cool, um, Lord of the Rings, uh, set. It's obviously from Wizards whole universes beyond thing they're doing nowadays. So, you know, at first I was kind of skeptical, but I've seen some of the cards already. I've seen what this is, has to offer and it looks pretty darn cool. So, you know what? I think it's time we crack it open and see what's in there. Hopefully, we'll get that, uh, I don't know. Let's see. We just want at least a decent serial number card, right? We want something that makes it worth the while. These things are not cheap. All I'm going to say is the price of this thing has just skyrocketed in the last week, and I'm like, okay. Well, there's obviously a reason. Um, now, keep in mind, when someone finds the ring... I don't know. I mean, is it going to still be worth $500 for one of these? I didn't pay $500. I'll tell you that right now. I did get a good deal on it. Considerably cheaper than what it's going for online. So, um, now, I mean, when it first came out, it was, I paid a, you know, reasonable price, but now it's worth a lot more. Um, uh, I do know they come with box choppers. I heard just some good, good versions of those, like some kind of surge foils or something. The set supposedly is a giant pile of printed money, but, you know, we're going to see what happens, you know? I don't know. But, regardless, I do like Lord of the Rings. I am a fan. J.R.R. Tolkien, his material is the inspiration for Dungeons and Dragons. I mean, you can't you can't have D&D without Lord of the Rings, because where did the elves and the dwarves and the hobbit little people and all the different things that are... Rangers, all that stuff came straight out of Lord of the Rings, and uh, you can thank J.R.R. Tolkien for bringing that to our world. So the games that I enjoy playing um, during the week, like you know, like I said, Dungeons and Dragons, Magic, all these things have a deep and spiritual connection to Lord of the Rings. So in a way, you know, even though this is a uni universe's beyond product, Magic: The Gathering has, in a way, kind of like. Um, a little bit of um, spiritual connection to Lord of the Rings, considering the pathway through which that fantasy style and lore came through. I, mean, I don't think it was the first version of stuff like that, but it certainly is very fascinating that the connection is there um, to all these kind of things. So let's go ahead and check it out. It looks like we got Smaug as the token, which is kind of cool. It's a legendary dragon token, Smaug. Um, if I remember correctly, I think we'll just flip them. Um, so we got a Morgul knife wound. Oh, that's never good. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Remember when that happened to him? He got that uh, moral wound on him, so that was hurt pretty bad. That was in, um, which movie was that? Was that the second one? Two Towers, or was it the first one? Gosh, I forgot. Uh, we got Mushroom Watchdogs. Uh, I'm not sure what the deal is there. Uh, Soothing Smeagol, and our fourth card, supposedly this ring that you're supposed to get will appear in the fourth card slot, and um, let's go ahead and check it out and see what we got here. So, didn't appear there, that's okay. Fear, Fire, Foes, damage can't be prevented this turn. Fear, Fire, Foes deals X damage to target creature and one damage to each other creature with the same controller. Hmm, brutal. Um, we'll put, you know what, I think the proper order with these is probably to just go common. I, I'll just do the uncommons with those. And then I'll put the rare separately and any of the special stuff up in here and we'll kind of go from there. Probably put that token there. Uh, so we got Gothmog. <laughs> goth, that's funny, I'm actually, I'm a goth girl, but we'll take Gothmog, you know, I mean, it's like combining something gothic and... Like a Moogle from Final Fantasy? But obviously it's not. When Gothmog, Morgul, Lieutenant enters the battlefield, amass orcs one. Creature tokens you control have death touch. Pretty brutal. Good for a token build deck. 
Oh, the lands. Yeah, I definitely am in love with the lands in this set. They really do pop out. It isn't just a map, but it is the Lord of the Rings overworld map. And if you played Dungeons and Dragons or you were a kid and playing D&D, we drew maps like this. I mean, come on. I had little mountains and the lakes and stuff in the rivers. I used to draw maps like this. I got them sitting in like folders and things just from when I was younger and doing that kind of stuff. Um, all right, so that's our land. We're just going to stick the lands on the far end here. Kind of go from there. Uh, we got Fall of Ky Care Andros. Whenever a creature an opponent controls is dealt excess non-combat damage, a mass orcs X, where X is the X is that excess damage. Uh, Fall of Care Andros deals seven damage to target creature. Pretty wild. Um, we'll just put that here. Moria Marauder, uh, like you know, the Mines of Moria, that kind of thing. Uh, double Strike. Whenever a goblin or orc you control deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library. You make play that card this turn for two mana. Not bad. Uh, let's see. Lost Anark. Or no, Lost Anark Knock Captain. Well, first strike. Whenever Lost Anark Captain or another human enters a battlefield under control, top target creature and opponent controls. At the beginning of your upkeep, create a 1-1 one, one white human creature soldier token. Pretty cool. Uh, I'll stick with that one. All right, so we got a, a showcase frame card here. Uh, at the beginning of your end step, if a creature died under control this turn, draw a card. When the ring tempts you, if you choose a creature other than Faramir, oh, Faramir, I remember him. Um, if you choose a creature other than Faramir, field commander as your ring bearer, Create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Pretty cool. All right, so we got another, uh, looks like, uh, showcase frame card. Uh, we've got Samwise Gamgee. Whenever another non-token creature enters the battlefield under control, create a food token. Sacrifice three foods. Return target historic card from your graveyard to your hand. Bilbo, Bilbo Baggins. I, every time I see it, you know what? That's going to make me think of that. Leonard Nimoy. Just go, just, just YouTube it. Just, just type in YouTube. Leonard Nimoy, Lord of the Rings, Bilbo Baggins. It's a one and done thing that you'll never, I don't know if you'll regret your, regret your life or you'll enjoy it or whatever. It's kind of hilarious, but it's hard to imagine the guy that played Spock in Star Trek singing about Bilbo Baggins. But hey, you know? We all have these weird quirks, I guess. That was his quirk. It's funny. Maybe he was seventies were an interesting time. I think that's when he made that. When Bilbo retired burglar enters or leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. When Bilbo deals combat damage to a player, create a treasure token. Nothing too crazy there. I think I'll put them in that stack. Uh, we got Poppin's Bravery, a common and this is a common or uncommon foil. Yeah. Okay. You may sacrifice a food. If you do, target your creature gets plus four, plus four until end of turn. Otherwise, that creature gets plus two, plus two until end of turn. Not a very good card. We got Legolas as a um, a foil, uh, full frame. Legolas, reach. Whenever you cast a spell that targets Legolas, Master Archer, put a what, plus one, plus one counter on Legolas. Whenever you cast a spell that targets a creature you don't control, Legolas deals damage equal to, equal to its power to, to one target creature. Now I gotta say that uh, I did have a crush when I was a, you know, when I was the younger girl. I had a pretty big crush on Legolas from Lord of the Rings. I thought her Orlando Bloom was really hot, and I just loved him in that role. He was just really cute, hot blonde elf. I was down for that. He was really, really hotty. But uh, you know, I'm a little older now, and he's still cute. Don't get me wrong. You know, he's played a lot of good roles in different movies over the years, but. Uh, Oh no, I just, I just, it was my teenage crush. Let's just put it that way. Um, all right, next we got is a stack of cards. What are we going to get? Is there any, okay, let's find out. Um, okay, we're just going to kind of slip through some of these commons real quick. Uh, nothing too crazy. It doesn't look like it got any kind of special random insert card in there. Uh, Build the pony, enters the battlefield, create two food tokens, sacrifice the food, and sign a turn, target creature you control with science combat damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. Yeah, whatever, no big deal. Um, what else we got here? We got long list of ints. 
I don't think I'm going to read that. I, I think you can kind of just pause the video if you're really curious. Um, and we will go right there. Oh, there's our land. Uh, looks like we got an island. Let's go ahead and drop it over there. Uh, Horn of the Mark. When two or more creatures you control attack a player, look at the top five cards of your library. You may reveal a creature card from among them and put it into your hand. Put the rest on the bottom of your library in a random order. Stick that guy right there. Shelob. Oh, yeah, the big spider queen chick from, uh, didn't she, uh, it was Frodo. Didn't he fight her with Sting? He did. Oh, you know what's funny? I'll be right back, guys. I got something kind of cool to show you here. One second. I actually have Sting. It's actually Sting from the movie. I figured it was, uh, it just kind of inspired me to go ahead and get this sword out. Uh, it is from from Lord of the Rings, but yeah, there it is. There's Sting, and uh, I had a, a friend of mine a while back. He uh, he gave this to me. Um, I actually think I did a tarot. Yeah, I did a tarot reading for him, and um, sure enough, he gave me that, and I was like, oh, really cool. I like it. It's really neat. So she lob, and uh, you know, Frodo he fought the spider and killed it. Uh, okay, so next we've got is going to be. The Gaffer. I don't know who this dude is. I don't remember, unfortunately. Halfling Peasant. The beginning of each end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, draw a card. Useful. Gimli. Counter of Kills. Counter of Kills. Interesting. Trample. Whenever a creature in opponent control dies, Gimli, Counter of Kills, deals one damage to tar that creature's controller. Oh, wow. I heard this was a good card to pull. Um... This one, I should put that there. Uh, this one, whenever a non-artifact permanent enters a battlefield under control, you may return another permanent you control that shares a permanent type with it to its owner's hand. So really good for bounce effects. So this is this is one of them cards that you really want to... That's a good one. I'm just going to set it in the... That, well, it's a mythic. I'm going to stick the mythic over there. Get some epic, epic mythics. I'll stick them over there. All right. Uh, Wizards Rockets... Uh, this is obviously from the beginning, I believe, of the first movie when um, Gandalf turned all the fireworks into really cool animals, like a flying dragon and stuff. I don't read that, but you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, kind of a lame card to get, but I got a card that has bats on it. Whenever you sacrifice a token, each opponent loses one life. Oh, uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Actually, this is really good, come to think of it. Uh, how many times a commander do we create or sacrifice tokens for stuff or even treasure tokens? This card is actually kind of broken. Oh my god, I think it's a common, but do they realize how broken that is? Alright, I'm gonna go ahead and set the broken card. Where do I put it, I guess? I guess I'll put it in the in the full frame, that color. Alright, so we've got Minas Tirith uh, enters the battlefield tapped unless you control a legendary creature. You tap it to add a mana, uh, white mana, you pay one and a white, you tap it and draw a card. Activate only if you attack with two or more creatures. You're drawing cards on lands. That is really strong. That is that is solid, strong guys. Whoa. Drawing cards on a land. Alright. I'm down. Alright. Let's see. There's some pretty solid cards in here. We'll hit that box topper here soon. Um, matter of fact. Yeah, we'll see. Uh, let's see. Let's try to open this. You know what? I'm not. I'm not fighting the cards this time. I'm just gonna go ahead and stab them. I just gotta make sure not to stab the cards, cause God forbid the dang ring card is in there. I will hate myself to death if I stab that thing. Um. All right. Well, we know the what the token is. It's an orc army. I'll just put it there. All right. Let's flip over. We got Woe's Pathfinder. She looks really cool. Uh, we're gonna stick that there. We got Bewitching Leechcraft, Soldier of the Grey Host, Lothlorien Lookout, Eowyn. I liked her. Uh, Lady of Rohan. At the beginning of combat on your turn, target creature gains your choice of first strike or vigilance until end of turn. When that creature is equipped, it gains first strike and vigilance until end of turn instead. Equip abilities you activate cost one less to activate. That's actually really good. I can throw that in a equipment deck. It's, even though it's uncommon, it's pretty solid. 
Elrond, Lord of Rivendell, also known as Agent Smith. <laughs> um, right? Wasn't it Hugo Weaving who played the role in the movie? But yeah, we've got uh, Agent Smith every time. And it's like, you will destroy this ring, or I will destroy any. Anyway, I, I, I don't know. He always was a good actor playing those kind of roles, so I, I just liked it. Whenever Elrond, Lord of Rivendell, or another creature enters the battlefield under control, scry one. If it's if this is the second time this ability is resolved this turn, the ring tempts you. Pretty wild. Just throw it in that pile. Got a land. Ooh, we got another mythic. We'll stick, we'll create a mythic pile there. Last March of the Ents. Uh, this spell can't be countered. Draw cards equal to the greatest toughness among creatures you control. Then put any number of creature cards from your hand onto the battlefield. Oh boy, that's, that's pretty wild. That's a pretty good. Mithril coat. Uh, I think this is one of the good ones to get. Good equipment. Uh, it is indestructible. You can play it with Flash. A mithril coat enters the battlefield. Attach it to target legendary creature you control. So it would be a commander. Uh, whenever a uh, quick creature has indestructible equipment for three, that's pretty good. Oof, that's actually pretty good, guys. Uh, trap the Trespassers, uh, Secret Council. Each player secretly votes for a creature you don't control. Then the then those votes are revealed. For each creature with one or more votes, put that many stun counters on it, then untap it. All right. Interesting. Uh, we got Peregrine Took. If one or more tokens would be created under control, those tokens plus an additional food token are created instead. Sacrifice three foods, draw a card. Uh, I want to pause right there. You you know what this means, right? Let's show let's show you something here. Where's that goofy card with the? Hold on. Where's the one that had the? I don't know. Well, nonetheless, the card that um, allows you to deal damage when you draw or when you make a token or sacrifice a token, you would want to pair that up with this. So. That right there is a good good pairing to combine those two. Smeagol! Helpful guide! Uh, I can try to do the Smeagol voice. It might be a little bit off, but I will give it a shot. Smeagol! Oh shit, okay. Oh, well, there goes the video. But anyway, so whatever. That is the best my best try. But anyway, we got Smeagol. At the beginning of the, if you're end step, if a creature died under your control this turn, the ring tempts you. Whenever, whenever the ring tempts you, target creature... Reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a land card. Put that card into the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest into their graveyard. Pretty cool. Um, we'll stick that there in the showcase pile. Looks like we have another co uh, copy of Last March of the Ends. We know what it does. We just read that one a minute ago. Um, Rosie Cotton of South Lane. I don't remember this character. She creates a food token. Whenever you create a token, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Other than Rosie. She's probably in the book, I'm pretty sure. The Balrog. Oh, that's the thing that messed with um, Gandalf, wasn't it? Uh, when he was on the bridge and he was like, You shall not pass. And he fought this thing. Spell cast one less to cast. Reach permanent sacrifice this turn. Has haste. The Balrog of Durin's Bane can't be blocked except by legendary creatures. When the Balrog dies, destroy target artifact or creature an opponent control. That kind of thematically makes sense. It's kind of a high casting cost, but he looks pretty. He's a pretty, pretty cool card. I will try to speed this along. I am looking to enjoy this set a little bit and just like, you know, crush it all at once. But uh, I will go ahead and see what we've got going on here. Brandy Wine Farmer. Okay, so these are just your basic commons. Basson, Shire Sheriff, a land. All right. I got the Scroll of Isildur. Um, I won't read that one, but I'll just let you guys pause the video if you want to check it out yourself. Put it there. Born Upon the Wind. He may cast spells this turn as though they had flash dark card. Yeah, all right, whatever. Galandriel. Ooh, one of my favorite characters. Galandriel, Elven Queen. Will of the Council. At the beginning of your combat of your turn, if another elf entered the battlefield under control this turn, starting with you, each player votes for Dominion or Guidance. If Dominion gets more votes, the ring tempts you. Then you put a plus one, plus one counter on your ring bearer. If Guidance gets more votes, 
or the vote is tied, draw a card. Cool. It's Galandriel. It's, uh, oh, she's mythic, so we'll put her there on the mythic pile. Hopefully I didn't mess up the mythic stacks. Gollum. Gollum. Anyway, Gollum, patient plotter. Uh, when Gollum, patient plotter, leaves the battlefield, the ring tempts you. You pay a black to sacrifice the creature, return Gollum from your graveyard to your hand, activate only as a sorcery. So he keeps coming back. That's the Shokit Mount Doom. <laughs> of course. Mount Doom. How about that? You tap it, pay a life, you add some mana. Isn't it like, uh, what's the other card like that? Horizon Canopy and that whole set from, um, what was it? Uh, Modern Horizons from back in the day. Uh, you pay that, that, and that. You tap it, Mountain Doom deals one damage to each opponent. That's annoying. If you pay five, uh, one red, one black, five any. You sack it and a legendary artifact. Choose up to two creatures and destroy the rest. Activate only as a sorcery on a land. You're blowing up everything. It's pretty busted. I'm going to throw it over there. It's pretty solid for land. Um, what do we got here? Lobelia Sackfile Baggins. I assume it's one of the Baggins families. From the battlefield turn and create the X treasure token. Lots of interaction with treasure. That's kind of cool. Um, yeah, I'm going to stick that over there. Samwise the Stouthearted. When Samwise the Stouthearted enters the battlefield, choose up to one target permanent card in your graveyard that was put there. From the battlefield this turn, return it to your hand, then the ring tempts you. Cool. Hey, we got Gandalf the White. How about that, guys? Check it out. We got Gandalf the White. Look at him in all his glory. You may cast legendary spells and artifact spells as though they had flash. If a legendary permanent or an artifact entering, the, entering or leaving the battlefield causes... A triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, that ability triggers an additional time. I have a deck I can throw him into right now. We're going to drop him in the mythic pile. That's a pretty solid hit. I mean, these cards, I know this set's going to get opened like crazy. It, I'm fairly certain the value on these is going to plummet, but they're cool. And hey, if I pull a serial card or a... Um, <laughs> I miracle the, the ring, the one ring out of all this. Boy, I'll tell you what, guys. I don't even know what I'll do. I, I, if it's on a video, I just would be like, oh boy. All right. All right, there's our uncommons. That's her island. We're going to drop it over here. We got uh, Acelia Doors, Fateful Strike. Um, destroy target creature. If its controller has more than four cards in hand, they exile cards from their hand equal to the difference. Whoa. Pretty well. We'll drop it over here in that pile. Actually, no, no, this is a put that there. Uh, Fall of Care Andros. I think we've seen that card already. Hadir, Lori, and Attendant. This could go in my elf deck, maybe. Uh, what are the X? Where the one plus one enters the battlefield with X? Oh, it's a you pump X up. Gain vigilance and get plus one. Oh boy, yeah, that could get broken really fast. I could trample the elves like crazy out of that. Samwise, oh, same card as before. White Tower of Echthalon. Cool. Uh, return target legendary creature to its owner's hand. Oh boy. Um, Wait a second here. Oh, I, I was going to say, wait a second. I've seen this before. Isn't this Caracas? And I'm like, that's banned in Commander. Oh well. It's cool to see the card, but the card is fundamentally banned in the format we usually play, so... Yeah, okay, whatever. It's cool and all, but whatever. Bandit Commander. I was like, I was reading it, and I'm like, isn't that Caracas? And then I see in the tiny print Caracas, and I'm like, oh, well, yeah, there we go. Yeah, here's the card I was talking about. Mirkwood Bats, whenever you create or sacrifice a token, each opponent loses a life. That's, that's believe it or not, like the sleeper hit. <laughs> it's a sleeper card, so hard. Um, nasty end, an additional cross cast spell, sacrifice a creature, draw two cards, a sacrifice creature was legendary, draw three cards, that's a coup. Yeah, whatever, I'll put it in that pile. Elrond, a master of healing. Uh, whenever you scry, put a plus one, plus one counter on each of up to X target creatures, where X is the number of cards looked at while scrying this way. Whenever a creature control with a plus one, plus one counter on it becomes a target of a spell or ability, and opponent controls, you may draw a card. And we got a food token. Yeah, okay. These are kind of cool. I'm um, moderately impressed. You know what? Let's hit this box chopper. What, why not? What do you what do you think's in there, guys? Hopefully it's the Cavern of Souls reprint. Um, that would be amazingly epic if that's the case. K 
cavern of souls. Could you imagine? It's Redhorn Pass. Um, I don't know if this is Mouth of Ronan. That's not a really good one. Oh, wow. Too bad. It's Snowland. Uh, you pay four in a snow mana, and you sacrifice it to deal four damage to target creature. It's damage on a land, but you gotta play Snowlands, and... I don't know, guys. Who plays Snowlands? I don't know anybody playing Snowlands. Oh, it's kind of a weak hit in that slot. But maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's something I don't know about that card, but I don't think that's really that impressive. But let's keep digging. Let's go through the packs. Gosh, we can keep dreaming and hoping here. There's got to be something floating in this in this pile. All right, Sam. We're just gonna skip through all these and go right to the good stuff, so I don't take up too much time of yours and mine. Uh, we got another pretty land, Doors of Durin. Oh, I remember this. Legendary artifacts, right? Too when you may reveal the top cards in your library. If a creature card put it on the battlefield, tapped and attack. If it's a creature card put it on the battlefield, tapped and attacking. To next turn, it gains trample if you control a dwarf and hexproof if you control an elf. That's kind of cool. All right, yeah, cool. Rangers of Is. Uh, I'll skip that one. I guess we won't read that one, but you can kind of see what this does. Prize pig. I heard this some shenanigans you can do with this card. Elrond, Lord of Rivendell again. Another creature. It's just like the other one. We just read that guy. Gimli. That's your dwarf. Our dwarf pal. He has indestructible as long as two or more creatures died under control of this turn. When other creature control dies, put a plus one plus one counter on Gimli. When this ability resolves for the third time this turn, Gimli fights up to one target creature you don't control. Yeah, he's alright, I suppose. He's got his uses. Pippin's Bravery. We'll stick that over here. Rising of the Day. Creature to control of haste. Is it enchantment? It is. Legendary creature control is plus useful. I suppose that's got its uses. We'll stick it there. Uh, Lobelia Sackwise Badigans. We've already seen her. So we're going to go there. We're going to go there. And we are... Guys, we're halfway through the box. You know, it's pretty wild that uh, this is hopefully going to be worth the effort of going through all this. And these boxes are cheap, I'll tell you what. And, uh... In a way, this whole deal is almost like a lottery, if you think about it. It's like playing the lottery. You might pull the thing you're looking for, or you just might get hosed and not get what you're looking for. But, um, yeah, I am pulling some good cards that can be played in decks. Just nothing that's going to, you know, remake my entire life. It would be kind of cool if they did. Radagast, Wizard of Wilds. Is Ward 1. Beasts and Birds control of Ward 1. Whenever you cast a spell with mana value 5 or greater, choose one. Create a beast token or create a 2-2 two -two bird creature token. So he's like a... Oh, yeah, I remember him. Oh, we got one of the Nazguls. These are actually going for something. It's like a $10 Nazgul right there. How about that, huh? $10 Nazgul. We'll stick them in the extra pile, I guess. It's Gandalf the Grey. Okay, we got Gandalf the Grey. Uh, Prince Immeral the Fair. You draw your second card each turn, create a 1-1 one, one white human soldier creature token. Oily fans. I remember those. Oh, we got Rivendell. That's kind of neat. Uh, let's put the oily fans there. Rivendell enters a battlefield tap. Let's control a legendary creature. Um, tap for the mana. Pay the two mana. Scry to activate only if you control a legendary creature. Scry on a land. I, I Wow. Okay. Sure. That's pretty cool if you ask me. Scry on a land. All right, five packs to go, guys. I will try to speed through these so I don't torture you with card openings, but hey, it's a really cool set, and imagine if somewhere along these, these lines I pulled the card. That's all I gotta say is just, I don't think there would ever be another video on YouTube as epic as that. It would definitely get my channel viewership up because I don't think many people watch my channel, but hey, you know, I try, guys. I really do. I'm just not made of money. I wish I could afford as much man magic as I want to open and do, but... Uh, well, so we got to dig into Mythic. I should probably read it. Let's see. As a watcher in the water enters the battlefield, tapped with nine stun counters on it. Whenever you draw a card during your opponent's turn, create a plus one plus... Or a one one blue tentacle creature token. Tentacle tokens. Okay. Tentacle tokens. Tentacle... Tentacle... Tentacles go on hold. Okay. Whenever a tentacle you control dies, then tap up to one target Kraken and put it in the 
Stun counter on it and up to one target non-land permanent. Release the Kraken. You ever seen um, Attack of the Titans? All that kind of stuff. The Black Gate. It's another land. Uh, the, as the Black Gate enters the battlefield, you may pay three life. If you don't, it enters the battlefield tapped. Uh, you can pay the Black in, a, in any tap. Choose a player with the most life or tied for the most life. Target creature can't be blocked by creatures that player controls this turn. Ooh, that's got potential. Potential. Like this, a lesser level. Another Rivendell. Nasty end. Actually, this should probably go over here. Put it on the non foil stack. Nasty end. We got Wizard Rockets again. We'll put that over here. And we got Aowen, Shield Maiden. At the beginning of your combat, your turn, if another human enters the battlefield under control, this turn create two, two, two red human knight creature tokens with trample and haste. If you control six or more humans, draw a card. I say that's kind of, kind of good. How's our mythic pull rate? So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven, eight mythics there. We want to try to get to at least 12, one per pack equivalent is my, my personal want. Considering the cost of this product, you, should, you would think that they would give you a fat lot of mythics, but we'll see what happens. All right, so we got that, we got this, we got that, we got that, we got this, and we got that. All right, let's drop our land here. That. We got the Balrog again, just the regular format. Call of the Ring. Being your upkeep, you, the Ring Chimps, you, whenever you choose a creature, you choose a creature as your ring bearer, you may pay two life if you do draw a card. That's cool. Assemble the Entmoot. Fro Frodo. Frodo Baggins. Whenever Frodo Baggins or another legendary creature enters the battlefield under your control, the ring tempts you. As long as Frodo is your ring bearer, it must be blocked if able. That's cool. Anyway, I apologize, guys. I'm just, you know, trying to have some fun here out of this. Um, we got Herogrim, Sword of Rohan. Quip creature has plus two, plus two, and has protection from green and from white. Useful. Hearth and home. Okay, it's just a reprint of hearth and home, so we know what that does. That's kind of, that's that's a worthy hit. The Balrog of Dur- okay, we've seen this guy before. Oh, we got another Nazgul. That's useful. That's two of them. It's like a $10 bill each one. Got a foil Samwise, and we got a food token. Food token. All right, so how many guys? Three packs left. Is it? Are we gonna get there? Are we gonna get there? Is it gonna be something that's just gonna make this video the coolest magic video ever done, ever? Just because I pulled this stupid valuable one of one card. Could you imagine? Could you imagine? Let's make it happen, right? Let's do it. Well, it's not gonna happen in that pile. Uh, we'll go here. We'll do that. Uh, flowering of the white tree legendary creature control get plus two plus one and have ward one non-legendary creature control get plus one plus one it's got this actually makes some good good uses in a bunch of decks i'll set it there radagast the brown um uh, we'll ah, that's a mythic you know what? Let's, let's read the mythics let's see what you got whenever radagast the brown or another non-token creature enters the battlefield under control look at the top x cards of your library x is that creature's mana value you may reveal a creature card that doesn't share a creature type with the creature you control from another wall of text. I think you get the idea. We're just going to set it in there. Partner with Pippin. Another one of artifacts in the battlefield under control. Create a soldier. Anyway, that's kind of cool. Peregrine again. Faramir. All right. Um, okay. Whatever. Flash of Balrog. Hmm. All right, we'll stick it there. Fangorn, Tree Shepherd. Tree Folk have Vigilance. Whenever you one or more Tree Folk control attacks, add twice that much mana. If you don't lose, you don't lose unspent mana as steps and phases end. So I guess that's pretty useful. Eh, it could be better. You know, these cards, it's not terrible, but I like to see more full front, you know, full art mythics, that kind of stuff. We're round in the corner, guys. We're almost done with this box. Um, was it worth it? If you like magic, it's definitely worth it. It definitely really provides a lot of fun. There's a lot of good cards here that add to my collection. But 
is the money there? That's the question. Like, the game is a game, but it's, as a hobby, the cards do have a certain intrinsic value that ultimately people want to recover that value at a later date when they decide to exit said game. Um, so that's why things typically have a collectible value. So we got Minas Tirith again. Cool. All right, we'll drop it there. The Horn of Gondor. I'm kind of, kind of curious there. Human creature token. Okay, that makes sense. Pay three to create token. Soldier token for X is the number of humans in control. I guess that's really good in a human stack, for sure. I'll stick it there. Subjugate of the Hobbits. Whatever. Frodo Baggins again. Let's just put him there. Mary, Esquire of Rohan. I think the whole, this whole team now of all those guys. Peregrine took again. Delighted Halfling. Yeah, we'll stick that there. And a food token. Last pack. Round in the corner. We are literally in the home stretch. So I, she's at this point. Anything's possible. Anything's possible. I'm not going to be too disappointed if I don't get this expensive card or anything because I'll be honest with you it, it, the chances are very very slim when you deal with probabilities but part of me thinks like geez it could be me right well not in this pack but hey you know there's always somebody that's going to get the pack that has that thing in it just not in that pack um we got Smeagol we got display of power let's put Smeagol there uh, we'll drop that there We'll go ahead and taunt from the rampart. Go to all creatures your opponents control. So next turn, those creatures can't block. That's pretty wild. I suppose that's useful. And we got another Legolas here. The Shire. Okay, legendary land. Uh, you pay the one in the green. You tap it to tap an untapped creature control to create a food token. All right, then. Food tokens. Samwise again. Quick Beam Art Style. I didn't think I had a name. Wow. Yeah, whatever. And Galandriel. We already had her. And that's it. That wraps up the, the whole thing, guys. So let's see what we got. We did pull some Mythics here. So uh, we got Galandriel, I think, twice, right? Didn't I get another one? Let's see. Is there another Galandriel in here? Maybe it was a... You know, maybe it was a non... Oh, there she is. Yep, we got two of those. Got two last march. The the LSR of the Elf Stone, that's actually pretty cool. So a lot of these mythics are pretty pretty neat. Sword of Hearth and Home. Uh, that's not a bad hit. Watcher in the Water, Red Horn Pass. So you know what? There's some cool stuff here. Nothing I would entirely write home about. Nothing I'm too crazy about. There's value. I mean, just these Nazgul's people are right now they're worth like 10 bucks, 11, 12, 13 a piece, but I think once the set gets opened a lot, these cards will go down in value, I'm certain. But at least um, there are some good things in here and, and, and some pretty, pretty, pretty spicy pulls. Nothing too crazy, but uh, yeah. So, you know, if you guys are lucky and I got the money aside, put aside, I'll go ahead and pop open another one of these boxes. And uh, we'll go ahead and spin the wheel again. We'll spin the wheel of fate and see if we can pull another million dollar card. And if we were all another, we'll just say just one. And just one million dollar card would be really good, wouldn't it? Uh, definitely allow me to pay off a few bills, I can imagine. But hey, guys, I'm sorry it's been a little bit since we make a video. I have been making a few. I just haven't posted them. I was just like, eh, I don't know if you guys want to watch them or not. But I'll try to post some more. I've got some decks. I've been fumbling around with some decks and trying to feel out and see if I can make them better because every time I try to put something in there's another card that comes out and I'm like oh wow I need to add that card to the deck or and then play test it and all that stuff so you know um I think this was a success I'm kind of satisfied with the set the set's great it's really pretty but um guys it's been great uh have fun out there playing magic and good luck to whoever finds that that one of one the one ring, you know, hope you find it. All right. Have a good one. Bye.